in, in this session, we are particularly looking at what you have been able to collect. How do you uh, put it together in terms of analysis? Uh, and we're going to use a, an app called um, the events report. And I, most of you will have access to that um, uh, if you have access to that analysis, both here during the training, but also most importantly, when you go back home. Uh, because we are training you to go back and utilize this knowledge and skills uh, to enhance the data use within your programs. Uh, we've seen quite good um, programs being designed, but uh, analysis from it has not been really uh, very well presented. So uh, it, it's called an events program. And when we talk about an event uh, from our terminologies on Monday, on day one, uh, I think now you can be able to associate what an event is. Uh, in simple terms, let's just call it uh, a record uh, of that captures uh, the data that you have, you've, you've entered in the different program stages, uh, be it in the vaccination. So those different records that you've captured and saved and synchronized is what we're going to be referring to as event. So in terms of um, our objective here, um, we look to see that we can be able to uh, share with you the functionality that is currently within the events report. Uh, I also want to take an opportunity to, to, to share with you that uh, we, are, we are taking a, a whole rebuild of these events up. So uh, very soon, probably maybe 2.38 or 9, you should be able to see a well, um, uh, a, a rich events report. So we're going to be able to share with you uh, what functionality you can be able to do within the events report as it is now with this current version of which we are using. Uh, um, a little bit uh, looking at the terminologies again, explain to you uh, the difference between an event report and an enrollment report. Uh, and again, this is something that is, uh, you know, should be now on your mind in terms of how you've been going through data entry, what is an enrollment and what is an event, the differences. And so when we are doing analysis, these have to be very well differentiated and understood uh, not be surprised by the kind of data that you, you, you will be able to see. And we will see that depending on your selections around these two, you should be, you will be getting different results and we'll have, uh, we'll explain why that uh, differs. Point at what point did you guys lose me? Uh, to in the beginning, in the beginning, <laughs> no, after the event reports, but you may proceed. So, okay, sorry, sorry, apologies. Um, uh, I don't know what exactly happened, but uh, yeah, so in, in, in the objectives of this, uh, the objectives would be uh, for this particular session, we are going to be able to uh, to explain the different functions, what the event reports can be basically be able to do for you in terms of producing some nice reports that you can be able to present in your, uh, in your data analysis and, uh, and use. Then uh, we are going to, deep, uh, to be able to use this events report to explain the differences between what an event report is and what an enrollment report is. Report is. Um, and again, uh, this is where we will be able to see that uh, uh, you know, we can be able to generate different results by selecting all the other parameters the same, but uh, with the difference of, of the event and the report, uh, the numbers may be different, and we will just be able to show that and explain why that is happening. Then um, we will be able to design um, with you to be able to design an event report uh, uh, from the tracker data that we have been collecting. Then um, most importantly, be able to uh, 
differentiate the, the difference between repeatable stages and non-repeatable stages. Well, when we talk about repeatable stages, we are looking at a situation like, for example, uh, Emma has been talking about how many lab tests are done. So the lab result stage was made repeatable, meaning that we can be able to have as many lab tests or requests as we can um, uh, in, in, in our program. Uh, when you take it to the school, it is as many attendances the child will be attending school or the learner will be attending school. So you'll be able to use the same stage to capture the daily attendance or monthly attendance or annual attendance. Uh, we take it to outside health wash. Um, you'll be looking at probably maybe somebody is monitoring the cleanness of toilets. Uh, how many uh, times the toilet was clean or not clean on the different days. So we will be able to explain that in the events report and how this analysis can come out. And finally, uh, we will be able to, um, to, show you, to, to, to show you data from the multiple tracker programs, how you can be able to combine these stages. For example, I want to know the requests uh, against the test results. Those are two different stages and uh, we will be able to show uh, those differences. Then um, going to our introduction again, this is just uh, basically to give you an overview of what we are heading in. Some people's hands are tired and they have put them down, uh, but it's okay. Uh, let uh, we, we're going to be looking at how we can use the events report to be able to produce, uh, uh, to aggregate our data. For example, you could, you've been collecting information about you know, uh, what type of test uh, is required. You can be able to find out in your, in your whole track in, in instance or in, for all the clients you've seen how many have ordered for this test. So you'll be able to use this, uh, this aggregate type of report, uh, which is here to be able to see that. Particularly in this example is um, uh, most what is familiar with most of you both from this academy and what is happening back at home is the vaccination. And in vaccination, we've had uh, so many different types of vaccines. So you may want to find out how many people have received AstraZeneca or, um, or the other types of vaccines that you have in the country. So you'll be able to get, and you can even be able to disaggregate them by gender, by sex, so male and female. And that's a good report that you can quickly be able to click and, and, and get your, your report. And we shall take it also, you know, learners, how many learners have attended school in this, in this uh, period and so on. Then um, in, in particular, also surveillance and also doing some deep dive analysis and looking for errors, you will find yourself trying to generate what we call line lists or uh, lists of the raw data that has been entered. Uh, for example, here, uh, you will be requested to at least give us all the people who have received uh, uh, AstraZeneca and uh, have the second dose. That would mean that, you know, this is probably somebody who has, the people who have been fully vaccinated, the system will be able to allow you to generate this kind of list in the events report. We will also um, uh, further look at, you know, whatever we can be able to generate can be saved and can be downloaded as a Excel, as a, as a JSON, as XML, and embedded into your, your other reports. And also this being saved, uh, some of you as you've been logging in, you've been um, ushered into nice dashboards. Uh, and so we will be able to see uh, that this data that we, that the, the tables that we have been able to, to generate and save can be added to the dashboard. Uh, we will also further look at the events report. Uh, but sorry, we will also look at that, uh, you know, for you to be able to use the event, uh, the events report, everything will be based on the program. So we'll be analyzing data according to the program. It could be your vaccination program. It could be your TB program. It could be your, be your runner tracking program. It could be your sanitation tracking program. So whatever we, we have designed, we will be basing that to, to be able to run our events reports. And um, and in these events reports, we will be able to see the flexibility in terms of filtering and reading down to some particular data that you may be interested in. It could be for the purposes of you know, identifying errors, also being able to limit or 
uh, filter your data according to what the person uh, has required. And this will look at data elements. You can be able to select what data elements and attributes you want to add into your, your system, which period, uh, as you've all seen in the different fields, you, you, you have you know, uh, uh, fixed periods, you have relative periods, you have, do daily and when you talk about period uh period i think you if you all remember this is data that we are entering on a daily basis so we have flexibility to be able to run from a daily report all the way to the um uh, financial or yearly reports and also organization units with filters can also be applied here and um uh we have two particular types of reports that we can be able to generate. One is the event support, and another is an enrollment report. And again, I will show you and differentiate this when we come into the, the place. So, uh, and finally, um, tracker program stages uh, will contain events. If you remember from our model, these are the events we're talking about is the records of what is being tracked. And, and these program stages, again, uh, we, we probably may not have uh, as some of you may be still really uh, un confused about why do we have program stages? Why do we, uh, why, why, why do we have so many program stages? The program stages really depend on so many different things that you, that that your design considers. Sometimes it's events which are connected together, and you group them together, and then you create one that particular stage, or there is a sequential flow of your data collection that you want to be able to harmonize into different stages, and that stage whatever is going to be in there is, um, is what we call the, uh, the, the, the program stages. Uh, then, uh, and, and you'll see, you know, the different ty types of, 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 of outputs, events, and reports. Uh, and, and, and this basically will become very, you know, uh, will be well understood when we get into the, into the program. Okay. So, uh, and we will see the multiple program stages, as I said. So we we having uh, like our program of the surveillance has quite a number of multiple programs and how we can be able to analyze data across the different uh, programs. So um, that's, a, that's the, the summary of what we are going to look at now. And I can just now be able to take us to, to go now dive into the uh, hand zone uh which will be the step-by-step -step demo now um just as a, as a, a disclaimer and a, a warning i know all of us are itching to get to our computers to go step by step it's been a very interesting when you had the android because the android phone was in your hand and the screen was being projected on the, on the laptop or or your smart display in your office uh, but uh, let's be careful on if we want to follow step by step. Um, if you don't have two displays, I, I would advise that you you probably uh, sit back, relax, and watch, but keep attentive. And then uh, you can be able to redo some of these steps when we are done. But if you have possibilities of splitting your, your screen into two, so that you can have one uh, where you're seeing what I'm doing, and then you have the other window where you are able to go and practice. That is also recommended. But otherwise, let's not get lost into practicing. Otherwise, you you, you may find yourself uh, um, being back in, and uh, lagging back behind in most of these uh, uh, sessions. So we're going to go step by step, and uh, we are going to use uh, two programs in this analysis. One is the vaccination, which is for me, which you, all of you are familiar with. Um, it is where you've been registering a client for vaccination, taking all their details, their age, their gender, their sex, and, uh, and, and all that, and then go ahead into a program stage which had vaccination and enter what they have been, uh, what they have uh, received in terms of the vaccine, what the dose number was, and then uh, um, you schedule for the next, uh, 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 dose and then you get the uh, you get the the, the 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 second dose and you also able to end that. So you have two two events within every at least uh, uh, tract entity. If you you are using uh, the two dose uh, vaccination, or if you are using one dose, then you probably have one. 
And we're also going to be using the COVID, surve the COVID uh, surveillance, uh, the surveillance program, which takes us into diagnosis, lab requests, lab results, and outcome. Okay, so for us to be able to do this, uh, we're going to use the demo, the demo um, um, uh, instance. Yeah, you can, you go to the demo. Uh, I'm, I might be showing a different one here, but you go to the demo and, and please log in if you, are, if you want to follow, but if you're not going to follow, please uh, keep watching the, the, the movie uh, so that you don't miss any step. Uh, okay, so I'm going to log in. And once I log in, uh, as I said, we are ushered in by these nice dashboards. And at the end of the day, we shall be able to see where this data comes from. So uh, at this point, we said we're going to use an app called Events Report. So it's automatically, it's exactly here, but depending on your arrangement, again, they've been able to show that you can be able to search. It is an events report and an events visualizer. And when I talk about events, you, what comes into your mind is the reports that are entered individually in each of those program stages. So you click on it to launch it. And once you launch that, yeah, you will be able to see that um, uh, it loads. And once it loads, depending on your connectivity, uh, this is the window it gives you. Uh, again, uh, let me first take some time to explain this, uh, this window. It is slightly different from uh, uh, what most of you may have been using, the data visualizer, uh, the current data visualizer for aggregate reporting and also this file uh, tracker data. Um, we have this section uh, as the rest where you select what you want to add into your report. So on this whole side here, you have uh, uh, an opportunity to select what you want to add in your report, depending on what elements you want to add in, what attributes you want to add in, how you want to filter them, how you want to categorize them, and uh, for what period and for what organization unit, for which uh, facility, for which school, for which region, for which district. So that is all selected from this side of the and it can be collapsed by clicking on this three and then it disappears. So next time you find it, something like this, don't just say your data is to has changed. It's just like it gives you an opportunity to be able to see your analysis in, in, a, in a wider screen. Just these three dots, I mean, these three arrows allows you to collapse and expand. Now, on this other side is uh, the actions to be able to update your, your visuals. So like you want to update what you have changed. So when you have changed here, you've come and added a different uh, attribute or a different data element, you come decide, and this is where you can be able to enhance your table, your tables, your results, and be able to save the, the results. And then in this area, which already shows something, that is where all the results that we do, um, that we, we, we generate are displayed. So that is uh, part of the, um, this is the event support as it looks right now. Uh, and again, I'll say to you, it's, going, it's undergoing some uh, kind of river. And so you will be able to see that it is going now to be looking like exactly the way your data visualizer looks right now. That's what the aim is for the data is to be able to make it easy that you can be able to uh, even come and analyze your data if you've only been exposed to aggregate reporting. So now in this here, we have, um, we start with the, the type of, of, of analysis we want. So it's either going to be a pivot table and when we talk about pivot table, think of it as aggregation. You are going to be looking at aggregate numbers from my data. So if, if I've been collecting sex, male, male, this one was a male, that one was a female, at the end of the day, I want to be able to get an aggregate of all my males and all my females. So uh, that is what we, we will be using in case we want to know like how many learners attended school on this particular day or how many uh, uh, health workers have been vaccinated. We will use the aggregates because this is the concept of pivoting and aggregating numbers. Then we have the line list, which I'll come to later on and um, explain, uh, we've already started talking about it. What are the line lists? And then uh, we will be able to also use this type of output. So we have two types of outputs right now, the aggregate type number and also the, the line list, which is the individual raw data 
uh, by the columns and the rows that you've selected. <coughs> So let's start with a, uh, um, an example of where uh, we are required to see, to, to produce the number of, um, of, uh, of uh, COVID suspects by age groups and by sex. So we want to see how many in our, in our COVID um, surveillance report, how many, um, how many, Learn, I mean, how many clients, how many suspects between zero and five uh, who are male and female have been uh, registered into a system? So that's the example we are going to use to be able to generate a pivot table aggregate. So the next step we, we select is the output type. So the output type, two types, we have to, we have to do output types. One is the event and the, the other one is the, is the, um, is the enrollment. At the enrollment, I'm going to, to come back to it. Let me now explain on the event. So the event is now we are going to go to a particular, particular uh, given stage and be able to analyze on that particular stage. Like for example, here, yeah, we are talking about the number of uh, suspects uh, 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 who are tested positive. Uh, that data comes from um, uh, from a, a table, if a, the stage which you, if, if you all recall, what's the stage? I should be getting answers directly, but uh, since we we can't see your your hands up, or you, you can type. What stage do we would, would we get the 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 tests the, the tests uh, from the COVID? If you can type in the chat, you've been entering this data. Lab results, oh good. So, yeah, so we are going to be now analyzing because we are, we are interested in the number of positives, we are going to be analyzing data from a program stage and this is now to deal with an event. So we click on an event, okay? Then the next step is to select the program that we are going to be working with. So now you can have access to as many programs as is your system has. But for, for example, here we have access to all the three programs. But for this particular, we are going to be looking at the COVID surveillance, uh, the, the case based surveillance. So you click on that, and then it will give you the, the different program stages, and you choose the program stage for where you are going to be able to do your analysis. So at this point, yeah, everybody here in the, in, 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 on the screen is, share, is sharing that we are going to be able to get the lab results from the lab stage. But remember also one to have it by age and by sex. So those ones are going to be able to put them, to pick them from the what? From the attributes. So every program, every stage you, you will select, it will come automatically come with all the attributes of that program. So they are all automatically linked. So I'll come here and click on the lab stage. And what you will be able to see here, you will be able to see D is, these are data elements, and these are data elements which we have put in our design in the, that stage that data is entered on. And where you see PA, that is program attribute. So, um, and, and it will be associated with every stage of the event that uh, output that you select. So first of all, I need to select stage three. First of all, I need to select uh, what I want to add in my, in my, in my, in my output. The first is uh, we heard about that somebody wants to be able to show by age. So you can be able to pick age here and add it. Just go to it, double click, and then it gets added there in your, in your selected items to add in your output. The other we, part we want also to add is the, is the sex. So if you can be able to see sex here, you can be able to pick it but you can also be able to use this filter. Just click here and filter, and then you type sex, and then to filter by sex, and then you add it there. So again, those are the two in my analysis because the, the directors or the command center or the team that has paid for this data wants me to look at the sex of the learners or sex of the clients that have been able to, uh, to, to, to enter in my system. And then lastly, we want to have the lab results because we want to see the positive cases of all that we have tested how many were positive. So again, I can click here to cancel that and I click on it or I just delete it 
and then I, I can put filter by results. So in here, I don't want data of the results. I just want the lab, the lab test result. And this is where we are specifying positive, negative, and, and termin in terminate and whatever um, uh, options that we had under uh, test results. So you now click on it again, you add. So uh, of all that has been requested, I have, um, I have selected the parameters or the data elements and attributes that, are, that I need for my uh, program. So again, they asked you for the period, you may, they must specify what period you want. And again, here we have a variety of how to choose period. You can be able to have fixed periods where you just go in and have a start date and the end date. It could have been a campaign or it could have been an outreach. You want to choose from a particular date. You can just click on this and you will get a, a starting date. Probably it is for starting from this date to this date, uh, starting from this date and then ending on a particular date. You can be able to use that. However, we also have what we call fixed period. You can also be able to look at monthly or weekly or quarterly or financial year. You can choose from that, or you can use the relative period. This is exactly the same the same way uh, we do in the in the in, in the data visualizer. So. There is always a default period that is selected by the system. So you make sure you untick that, otherwise you'll get results which will be surprising you and you don't know why, because the default date is selected and you have not unticked it. So let's first select the, the, the last 12 months because our system was defaulted to always uh, use uh, the period of last 12 months. Now, particularly for my request, they want to see for this year. This is the year they want to see like how many um, uh, positives did we have this year. So you can come and pick on this year and then all of us know that this year is 2021. You can either use that or you go to the fixed period and look for yearly and then add that, good. And then lastly, uh, for the most important uh, parameters that you need to select is um, for where, or for which district, for which region, is it for a country, is it for a particular facility, is it for a particular district? And for this request, they had wanted to see in the entire country, which is a uh, allowed country, and uh, you just click on that. If it was for a region, you can just select any region and just click on, on it to be able to uh, pick uh, data for that particular organization unit. If it's for a district, you can drill down and be able to select that district. And you can check it. But for this particular one, they did say we want for the whole country. So I'm going to click on that. And then it will be able to give me all the aggregate numbers for that particular um, country. Then, um, so uh, to once you've selected all that you want, you've selected what you, the, the, the data elements are not you want in your report, the period and the organization unit, you can update to see your results. So when I update, uh, what it's doing, it's aggregating all the numbers by the parameters that I've selected, and it will give me the results not so far from now. So that is my table. That is how it looks like. This is my aggregate. It has given me the edge. Now you see these edge groups. Uh, I will again to share with you where they're coming from. You can see the male, the female, and the NA. NA in this event report means that it's uh, miss this missing data. So there was no data entered. It's not that it's not applicable, that they selected the not applicable. Uh, and this is one thing that is really going to be changed uh, soon because uh, this has been confusing quite a number of people. So there are some people, there are some places where they did not enter the, the sex, and then you will see the different numbers. Now, uh, the first thing is that the person said they only wanted the positive uh, results. So if you give them all this big table, it will be very difficult to analyze and you know, use for their presentation also. So we now go to what we call the filters, the different filters I talked about. So once you're still here, you go ahead and click on that again. Uh, and this is now where we can be able to do some filtering. So under here, we have the edge. So the edge, they did tell us that we need to be able to use the edge groups. And um, these are legends that you create <laughs> and attach to your data element or attributes, and you can be able to use your edge ranges from the like zero to five, 
0 to 4, like the way it is. So for this, um, use let's use the edge, edge group, grouping of core facts. Okay. So if I do that and I update, you will see that my age range has changed from zero now to five, from zero to four to zero to five. So you can have different age ranges that you can be able to apply to this. And this again will make it very easy to integrate with our HMIS for those who are you know, having all these so many disaggregation, like zero to five, five to 10, 15 and all that. So those, those are, can be added in as legends and then controlled here. Then the other thing that we look at is uh, the, the, the results. So for this case, we only want to present a table that only has positives. So how do we filter for this positive? So we go back to our data selection and we will go to where there is lab. And then all the options that you see here, one of the options that you have in here all appear here. And for this case, I only want positives. I just click on positive and it will get selected here. And when I update, then uh, my table is now getting some shape and presentable. So this is how um, uh, um, uh, I can be able to filter by only positives. So if I want to add positive and negative, I can also go back and be able to add, to add uh, negative and then uh, I update. So you'll see that negatives are coming, but this one I'm interested in what the positive. So you come here and remove it by clicking back on it and then it will be removed. Okay, so we are good. Uh, so the table still looks a little bit, it can be rearranged and uh, arranged properly so that we can be able to see our good results. So for example, maybe I can put only, uh, I can only put the edges in the rows and in the columns I can probably add in the, the results and the, and, the, and the gen and the sex. So you come to layout and then you can be able to move these things around. So I may want to put um, uh, six up there and then also lab results also up there. So I can push it even further up. I can even, since it's only one, I can push it in the filter, then I update. So this is a kind of table that at least is a little bit presentable and we can be able to see these are all the positives and they are different age groups and by gender. So that is how we are able to be able to come up quickly uh, with aggregate numbers from the data that we have been able to enter. Are we all together? You can put down your hands and thumbs up if we are all together. Before we go to the next step, uh, which is going to be able to, to look at line list. Okay, I'm just trying to see. I am falling, however, I cannot find edge data. Edge data. So you should be able to have seen that uh, here when, if I remove the edge now here, remove, I can be able to still go in a filter here and then I, I look for edge. So when I filter by edge here, just double, double click to enter. The age is there, then you update. That's your age. The age ranges or the, 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 the groups can be changed here. You can call it COVID age, COVAX age, and then you'll be able to get that. Good. I really like the table you created. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, good. So um, now with this, we can be able to be able to get back to a line list. Um, but before the line list, this table can be saved. Now that you like it and love it, you can go and be able to save it. So to save, you just come to favorites here and then click on save, then give it a name. Uh, this is probably, this was the C19 surveillance. Then you can add um, uh, positive, positive, cases this year. So you can be able to just save like that. You go to favorites, click on save, put a, descrip a description and then click on save. The table will be saved. And next time you can be able to come and open it as we shall be able to see. And you'll see the name, the name will come on top here. 
Okay, good. So let's go to the line list. And, and the line list, as I said, we, is, is trying to reproduce um, what you'd call maybe your registers or being able to regenerate your raw data in the columns and rows. So start from here, let's go and be able to start afresh. So you don't need to close the app and come back to it. Just come and, and uh, go to favorites and then you click on new then it will refresh and clear the old table. Remember it has been saved. So uh, we can be able to come back and, and, and pick it. But right now we're going to be able to see how we can produce a line list. Uh, and in this line list, uh, the request is that um, we should look at a, uh, a table that generates, uh, that gives us the first name, the surname, their national ID, their sex, their vaccine number, the, the vaccine that I've received, and then uh, what vaccine they have. Is it the first dose or second dose? Now, just to be to show you beforehand what I'm going to create, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to create something similar to this. If I go to open here, I'll look for a table, this, this COVAX uh, line list here. Uh, and, and this is what we call the line list, just being able to line list everybody. Like for example, you want to see the, when the dose was given, which date, when they registered, maybe you want to monitor the difference between the registration and when they go to get the vaccine. Uh, this instant date is given, we, we, we do talk about it more when we are designing the program in the, the, the programs. Don't worry about it. What you interested interest to you is when the activity was done, when it was done, and then, um, they, when they were registered, we talk about where they were registered, in which facility, in which school, in which region, in which district. It will all appear here. And their national ID, their first name, their last, their surname, the sex, the vaccine they received, and the, uh, the dose, whether it was first dose or second dose, or even the dose was not captured, like you see here, NA. Maybe sometimes you want this list to be able to clean your data. How many people did not have? the dose captured, this would be a good example. Again, don't panic, I am just, I just hit this to show you the wider table. So let's recreate this one and um, I will go to new, clear it off, and then we start. So for a line list, uh, and given that we are going to do a line list with, a, with COVID vaccination, uh, we will choose a line list here. And uh, if we are interested in only one uh, program stage, it is going to be an event, and particularly for this, we only have one stage, unfortunately. So we will be able to use um, uh, the event output, and then the program we are going to look at is what? Vaccination registry. And then we click on that, and you'll see it's only one stage, so it automatically will select that stage. And then we choose the elements that they want us to show in the line list. Um, Again, this has been a little bit disturbing for most people, like they want to put it in the very order they want to see it, uh, but I will show you how you can be able to rearrange your table to look exactly in the kind of order that you need. If you selected uh, six at the end and you want it at the beginning, it's okay. So let's start by selecting what uh, we, is needed. So they want us to be able to add the, the, the surname and the, and the first name and surname. So I can just type name and I filter by that. So it's first name, surname, and again, they also want us to be able to line list and add in our columns, um, uh, national ID. So again, it's there when I filter, then uh, they want also to have sex. I filter by that, add. They also would want us to have um, the vaccine name. I will be able to pick this one here. And then they also want to have the vaccine dose, uh, the dose number. So I can type by dose, and then I'll be able to have dose number there. So these are the things that uh, the, uh, the, the requester of the data would want to have in their line list. And we can go on and go on and go on and add, but this is, let's stop here for the purpose of the training and the time. Uh, so at this point, we, we choose the period. They said, uh, we want to see all the people who have been vaccinated this year. So you come here and you click on, on the period. So again, I can use last this year or I can be able to pick uh, uh, any given period. So at this point, let me pick this, this year. 
And then for this one, they particularly want a, for the whole country. So they want the whole country. So again, you can be able to untick this because it's what we used previously on that report I opened. So I want it for the whole country. Then I'll be able to click and update. So this is simply the lines that uh, uh, is required for our 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 our, uh, our list that was requested for, but they've gone ahead and said uh, we only want to see a line list of only those people who have second dose. Again, don't crack your head. I'm going back to re redo it again. This is now calling for filters. So you will see in this column we only want to see uh, those who have second dose because in here they also for them with first dose you can see, but only the person asked for second dose. So what do we do? We go again to our data elements or the attributes and then filter by that. So at this point, I have said we only need to see uh, for the dose number. So we come here to the dose number. And then when you click on that, you will see all the doses. So you can be able to save the first dose alone or second dose or third dose or even a booster. Sometimes you may want to also clean out people who have received a booster. Or, um, uh, for our school people, you may want to fit out only people who are absent. They, they, those options will be available here. So the one second dose, so we should be able to update. And the list now that is going to be generated is basically only those who are second dose. And in these columns, you can be able to arrange them again by going to layout. And then in layout, uh, you can be able to move them uh, across. Like for example, I probably want, yes, organization, in, but I want the national ID to be up there. So I click and drag and move it there. So you move it there, then the surname, the age. We don't have age, so we probably may want to add age so they can update here. And then you come and add age. Maybe age was something that we missed out there. Oh, there's no age in this data set, I think, yeah. We are collecting date of birth. Maybe that's date of birth. So that's what needed to be added there. So when I update, you will see that my date of birth has gone to the bottom here. Yet in my list, I would want to see where they were registered and what their ID is, their names, and the date of birth before six. So you come back here to layout, and you can move date of birth up there after or before where you want it, and you update. Oh, it's yeah, it's yeah. Then you update. So this is basically your, your line list. And this line list, you can also be able to save it and be able to, um, uh, to download it uh, and use it. There are hands up there. OK, let me just uh, finish this, and then I can stop for those two hands. OK, so this is our, our, our nice line list of all these, of, of what has been requested for us. You can go ahead and save it. You can go ahead and download it, uh, either as Excel, as CSV, as HTML, and all that. Okay, let me take a, a chance to get the two questions. Uh, we're not doing well with time. Yeah, you're doing well. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I have two questions, Sean Paul. Yeah. Sean Paul, you're raising your hand. Oh, these are the hands from the people who are up. Okay. So we don't have questions. Please lower your hands right now. Not confuse us. So do we have any quick questions at this point? Maybe Prosper, can I ask? Yes, you have. Go ahead. Yeah. So in the other pivot table, we can have uh, like uh, organizational hierarchy. But I'm wondering if we can do that also in the line listing. OK, thank you very much for that question. Any other question? Yes, I have a question for the, the dates. Uh, I saw in the table there are three different dates, the vaccination date, registration, and incident. So I'm wondering, I thought it was even date and enroll, enrollment date. But yeah, just what are these three dates? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any other question? Yes, I have a question on the same on the dates. Uh, I've seen most cases for the registration dates or all those dates that we enter when you're entering our data. 
they usually come with the time at the end, but they're all zero, zero, zeros, except for the instant dates. Uh, do we really need this? Like, I don't know the main reason why we do have the zeros at the end, because when you're doing, let's say, when you download the data, and let's say try to work with the data in Excel, sometimes you, they, they give us some troubles when we're trying to work in the pivot tables in Excel. So I don't know if they do have any main, main reason why we do have the zeros. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, any other question? Please go ahead and shoot the question. Otherwise, we close on that. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for those uh, three questions. Unfortunately, I don't have good answers for all of you, apart from one. Um, and this is what he actually is being refactored. So um, organization unit hierarchy, yeah, this is something that has been missing for a long time uh, in this report. And um, uh, it's, it's one of, actually, it's already actually added in the new app. It's one of the, uh, yeah, one, one, one thing that has been quite challenging because these are the last where the data is, is captured and it does not show us uh, exactly where the hierarchy in which district, in which region and so on. So unfortunately that is not supported in this app. And since this is going to be being revamped, it's not, it has not been added. But again, um, yeah, we should be able to see uh, that this can be added. Um, uh, well, it's already added in a new app, but uh, I, I'm not sure whether there is any, any possibilities of backporting, but uh, yeah, just uh, sorry about that, but it, it, it is not added. Then the dates, what are these different dates? Um, yeah, so uh, you remember in our design for the program, we have the date, uh, the event date. This is our event date. The day, the day when it happens. So you will you, you will see the name of what it has been called. For example, this one's called it the dose uh, vaccine was given. Some of you may be having it as a vaccination date. In other programs, you'll have it as a date of inspecting the toilets. Uh, it will also be having it as a date of you know um, uh, roll calling or attendance date or something like that. So that's the date that we have in the first column here. The second column here is the registration, when the person was registered, when the truck entry was registered in your instance. And again, it will also going to bear the name that you have called it on the other side, registration name. Now, um, the instant date is, uh, is, is always given, and it is, it is actually in the background. It keeps in the background. In most cases, it's going to be almost the same date as a registration, but not the side of the case. But um, uh, this is a date which is redundant here, and uh, we've actually been struggling to get it out. If I don't use it, because the, the instant date and the development dates could be different, in, in most programs, we can be able to use these two, but in some programs, we don't even need to use the two. For example, like a, 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 a pregnancy monitoring uh, date, we can have the date when the, man, the pregnant woman registered, but then the, we can also be able to have the date when they had the, the last, uh, the, the, the last, the LMP date. So you can be able to add, to add it here. Then also, it could for the children tracking, growth monitoring, and immunization. You could have this as a date when they registered in the clinic for tracking. Then you could have this as their birth date. But uh, this is given and ignore it in whenever you bring analysis right now. It's just redundant. In the new app, it's removed. Then the last one was the time. Yeah, this is actually picking from the system. Yeah, it's basically really, really redundant. And, um, uh, and um, it's a good feedback that we should be able to see if this can be quickly removed uh, from here. Because um, we don't have, uh, we've not set the time where we've not set the date time where we collect the date and also collect, uh, be able to collect the time. So this can be removed. But again, when you go, to, when you export this to Excel, you can be able to trim it off and, uh, and, 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 and remove it from your analysis. Yeah, I think those were the questions that we, that we have at this point. And let's, anymore, let's go to the next part of our, of our session, uh, which is now basically going to be able to look at uh, how we can be able to look at the line list maybe for a particular client and see uh, and see how events outputs and the enrollment outputs behave in, uh, in, in this particular case. So uh, to do this again, if you want to save this table, please save it. If you don't want, you can just be able to just go to file and then click on, on, um, on uh, new. 
to get to get a fresh look of your table. Okay. I think they, they are all good answers. Okay, thank you. Okay, now um uh take an example of um of again the vaccination. Uh the vaccination where we we want to, to do a line list that involves uh uh the more the multiple records we wanted a line list that involves multiple records of this uh, person so for example if it was vaccination we want to be able to see a line list that shows us the first visit the first vaccine the first dose and the second dose if the person received two doses if it was in a school we want to see this learner for all the times he came to school he or she came to school and and so that will all be captured in one stage so we're going to do a line and if an, an, an event uh line list that is able to show us these two uh, the, the, the many records that the, the, the person has in their in their program stage or the many events and and to, to do this uh let me just first show you what actually we are aiming at looking at so if I duplicate this, I hope we can all still be able to see my screen. If I duplicate this and I go to data entry, the data entry, just go home, and then you go to uh, tracker capture, go to tracker capture, and when you enter tracker capture, so it's taking, a little bit longer to load on my side. In surveillance, I have a particular person who had two lab requests, and I want to be able to list all those who have uh, multiple lab requests. And because they are all being one in one stage, I'm going to use the events. But let's just first look at the character what I'm looking out for. Now. So it's taking long to load. So it's loading on, the, on my side, and I hope you're able to follow as I try to load this. Okay, sometimes what happens is if you have multiple tracker captures open, uh, you will experience what I'm experiencing. I'm trying to look for, for all my windows to see if there's any other tracker capture that is open. Uh, and once I close it, it should be able to. Okay. Okay. okay so uh, as it does that, uh, I I would I really well, I would have loved to show you the records and see. We go to the track capture. We open this particular. Um, uh, a suspected case of COVID and see that this person had two lab results. But uh, since it's not opening, let me just quickly go and show you a lot. So we want to be able to have a line list and this line list should be able to show us all the records uh, of the, the person in each of the events or in each of the program stages. So I'm going to use uh, a suspected case and that is in, in the program. So my output is a live list and my output type is again an event. I said, I want to pick it from one particular stage and be able to show all the events, all the records that the person has been able to, to, uh, to that have been captured for that particular person. Okay, still loading. Okay, so that's an event. And then the program is COVID surveillance and I'm going to look at the lab requests. So when I look at the lab request, it will give me all the attributes and that elements that are within that stage. And uh, particularly here, what I wanted to be able to, to show you uh, is um, uh, that I can be able to select the first names again for this person. It's was a name, name. So we want the first name, the surname. We want the age. We want the, the, the lab test reason. We can type by reason. So reason here. 
the reason for testing, the lab test reason why they are testing, and then the specimen type that was collected. So then we have the specimen. So the type of specimen. So I want to be able to look at this and, and then the ID number. I think we also, did we put the national ID? Yes, we need the national ID. National ID, no. Sorry. Uh, we will put the, yeah, the, the local case ID, it's uh, ID, which is the local case ID. Yeah, we're using the local case ID. Okay, so there are things I want to be able to, 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 to show in my line list. And then um, I will go to the period. The period, let me choose last year. For this, they wanted me to look at the last year. I want to see particular lab results, requests for a given last year. And then uh, here I'm told that I need to be picking it from a particular facility, which is uh, uh, Moho, most. So I will come and expand that facility in the first one here. Uh, this particular uh, community health uh, facility, and then I will update. So when I update, it will give me a line list and you'll be able to see that uh, at this particular facility, I had a lab request last year from, uh, uh, for three events or records. But when you look carefully, you will see that uh, there is Sydney who had, a, who was, a, they, were, they were being tested because they were contact and this is the specimen type that was collected. Then there is also Camp Bell and Angela who had two tests. First, he was a, a contact, and then the, on the other one, he was, a, he was a seeking, um, uh, seeking uh, health care due to suspicion, suspicion of, of COVID. So uh, what I'm trying to show here is that when we do an event, it gives us um, the, all the records all the events within that particular state. Uh, so it would give me, if this, if Campbell or Angela had so many lab requests or had so many school attendances, it will list all of them in that particular one. So this was produced because of the event. Of the event. But if we turn it to the state, what is going to happen, if we turn it to the output of, of um, enrollment, what the system does, it is going to, or it is not going to be able to list for you all the events in, in that particular state, but it will only be able to give you the last record, the last encounter, the last event, the last entry of that particular um, uh, tract entity that you have selected. So let's change it to this and then you'll be able to see that uh, if I go back again, so it has to do, do the whole thing, you go to surveillance, then you pick your a lab request, and again, you pick your uh, case ID, local ID, then names. Again, the order doesn't matter here, you can be able to, to change them. Then there was a, uh, a lab request, lab uh, reason for the test, and then the specimen that was collected. So if I do that, and then I'm doing for last year, yeah, still last year, and I click on uh, for that particular facility, and I update. So what it has, oh, there was nothing. I didn't do any fake twenty. Double request. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you know, so that's good. Okay. Let's make sure we are still. Sympathetic result. Okay, I'm not sure. Yeah, but what you will be able to see here is there are not going to be any duplication of these of these records. It's only going to be able to give you the last event for that particular uh, uh, result. So in terms of line list, this is what I was trying to be able to use to explain the difference between when you use a line list over the event, that will give you all your events, but when you use the the screen has frozen, sorry. Okay, yeah, no, it's now, okay. Yeah, so you, it, we, when you use an event, it gives you all the, all, the, all the records that a person has had. While when you use an enrollment in the line list, it will be able to give you only what? The last event of each. So if somebody had four lab requests, then it will pick the last four, the last request in that. But again, also this will depend on your time period that you choose. 
So when that event happened, that's when to be able to choose to select the what that kind of period. Okay, so that was uh, basically to explain a little bit about uh, the line lists uh, of type event and also type uh, in, in, uh, enrollment. Okay, let's take a, a few minutes to take some breath, breath and then uh, be able to move on to our almost last two pieces of this, uh, this uh, training this session this afternoon, okay? Tadese, is that a new hand? Yes. Or it is yes. Okay, go ahead, ask your question as we take a bit to... Yeah, one question I have is when you uh, show us the uh, edge, you had the... Uh, you had a legend, I think, of uh, that classified it into by age range, age, age groups. So is that a legend and how do you set up that is a question. Oh, thank you very much, Tadese. Yeah, it's a, it's a legend. It's actually a legend which is created in maintenance. If I can cheat, this was not supposed to be part of this, but I can cheat and show you where this is created. Um, it's only that my system is really, really slow. Can you pull out data from different st program stages? Yes, we are going to be able to see that. That's what we are going to do next. Being able to do like list or aggregation uh, from different or using different stages. Okay. Um, but they say, unfortunately, this is not loading for me to show you, but uh, you know the legend, so this is coming from the legend. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's okay, Prosper. I know. If, if I, I, I want to make sure that's a legend. I can, I know how to. Yeah, it's a, it's a legend, and why you saw it automatically being attached to the edge. So you know now we are when you're creating a bit, a, a, an attribute or a, a data element, you can attach a legend to it so that you can be able to use it in analysis. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can you pull data from the different stages? Yeah, that's what we are going to be to go to. Line list enrollment. Okay, yeah. Somebody's already answering you why, why how we can be able to pull that. But let's first go to enrollment. Um, uh, sorry. Uh, um, uh, now, going to do to produce analytics using enrollment. Uh, I touched a little bit of it, but let's see what it does and what it gives us. And, and to be able to do this, um, I'm going to do a line list uh, of, uh, of enrollment type, and then you will see, it. actually that's what, exactly what I, I, I last did, but let's see how this comes out in terms of uh, line list. So I'll come here and I click on line list, then I'll choose enrollment type. Um, so, the program we are going to use here is um, the COVID surveillance. And uh, the stage we are going to use for now is lab, lab request again. So lab request, lab request here. And then let's choose a uh, local ID, local ID. Then we choose, uh, the names, the, the first name and the first name, surname, and then we also choose the test type, type of test. Then we choose a uh, uh, specimen type. And then we go to the results. Then we choose uh, this year. I mean the period. So then we should go to the period, and then we choose this year. No, last year. Sorry, no, this year. Sorry, and then we go and select from a particular facility, and then we update. So this is enrollment type uh, 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 kind of uh, of output. 
What again, as I shared with you, it is going to be able to show you only the last records of the requests. Obviously, many people here have more requests, but when you have an enrollment type, um, it, it is where it allows you to be able to select uh, only the last record. Uh, again, they are, uh, if you apply the filters, like say, if I only want to, to apply a filter on, on a PCR, and I say, give me an enrollment line list of PCR, again, it will first have to go in and filter only the PCR and give you the last, the last uh, um, record or line list of that particular event that has a PCR. So that's, uh, that's basically what a line list uh, of an enrollment type gives you. Apologies, I think I've gone off. You're not seeing me on the screen. Are you? Apologies, I think I've lost connection. Okay, I think I can hear you. Yeah, you can hear me, but you can't see me because I'm using two uh two gadgets okay now i think you can see me you can see my screen you can't see me <laughs> and you will not see me okay so uh yeah that's right okay so um let's uh, uh let's go on and um and further look at the um the aggregation of type enrollment so what does it mean when we are doing aggregation and we use type enrollment. Remember, our aggregation is given to us by pivot tables. And I would want us to compare two tables here that we are going to, to show. One that uses events, and then the other one that uses um, uh, enrollment type. So that's when actually you'll be able to uh, appreciate the difference between the two. So the, the enrollment only filters by one record. So it filters by one record, which unfortunately is the last record of that kind of selection. So um, to do this, uh, I will open um, I will open a new one, but I go ahead and open another event capture uh, where I'm going to show you what we're trying to produce. Uh, so what I've already saved up front in this is uh, an enrollment type. So I go to open, and then I will look for COVID COVAC registration by sex. Overc registration by sex as well. Where is that? Overc registration by sex. Hmm? Is it? Oh, this one here. Sorry. So it's here. So if I open this, this is a table that was open, was, was saved there before. You will see that it uses enrollment type to be able to give us um, the number of those who are enrolled or in the vaccination program by sex. Just as simple as that, a simple table, just be able to show you the comparison um, between the two tables so that we can be able to explain uh, the differences. So at this point, um, allow me to open so that I can be able to see my, to see, your questions and hands and the, and who is there? Who is following and who is not following? Oh no, this is supposed to be on my side here. Okay, so now I can see you all. Okay, so now uh, this is a table which was saved and you can see from here, you can reproduce it easily. What it was done is they, produce, they want a pivot table because they want to aggregate by sex and it's an enrollment type. And the program we are using is vaccination uh, registry and then vaccination stage, it's only one there. And they only want to analyze by sex, the program attribute. The, day, the, the period that was selected is this year. And then they, they, they use this, the sub unit three. These are also ways of being able to, to, to select the district because the next is the region. This is the national, this is the region. This is by actual region. And then the next is by uh, district. Okay. 
Okay, um, so let's go back and create our similar table, but only looking at what? At, a, at a, by event, an event kind of uh, report. So here we, we choose a pivot table, we choose an event, and then we go to the, oh, so we go to the, it's not showing me the, hiding some of these things and just to go blow it out and somehow it's it's uh, let me just refresh the whole the whole thing it was hiding where i would be able to select the attributes and the uh, yes so it has come so it's a pivot table which is aggregate of an event type and the program we're using is a vaccination and the vaccination stage and all we needed to look at is six uh which is this then for the period we want to have the same period which is uh, uh this year and then um this year and then for the organization unit we want to see at sub level one which is the 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 the, the, the region and then we update of course i think you did you deselect the two, past 12 months on the period. Like, sorry, you are network is so bad. I mean on the period. I think you didn't select or oh, okay. You sure? No. Oh, I didn't say yeah, just very much. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. So now you see already what it was giving us. It was giving us last year and all the last 12 months. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So this is the table that we want to look at, but the layout we want is uh, Sorry, guys, I wonder why it's uh... sorry, guys. Um, I, I'm not sure why. So you can now see my my screen. Okay, so this is the table that was produced by by enrollment, and this is the table that was produced by event. So let's rearrange it. You remember where we, were, we can arrange so that the, the, the org units are in the rows. So you put layout and pull this one and put it here. And then six will up there and then you update. So you will be able to see that uh, these two tables are all talking about the same parameters being selected, but they are different types. So if I drag this a little bit out, uh, so that I oops. I which table are you able to see now? I think you are seeing different table now. Let me stop sharing and arrange them. Just one minute, give me one minute, and I rearrange the two of them. Okay, it has lost my two tables. I want to bring it next to this to, to show. Okay, let me just do close this one, then have my other table. Uh, I may have to recreate it. Sorry, guys. Okay, so it's this one. So which table are you able to see? You see that's only one table. Okay, you can, can you can see now the one selected. Uh, this is the one where by enrollment. We've lost the other one, so let's recreate it quickly. Uh, I think my screen is freezing. I have everything freezing here. Apologies, let me restart. This window has been open for long. Uh, just one commercial break, just uh, as I rearrange my window.
it. The display is the word of today. Make sure that you go to day three and submit the word of today, which is Blackbird. They have to use your laptop. <laughs> it has a bit long. It has a long. Okay, uh, I hope we are all still back. We are back. As apologies, I switched now to Daisy, I think. So this is Prosper again. Um, uh, uh, my laptop froze and uh, my laptop froze and we, 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 we have to switch laptops now. So um, what you see here is a table that has by enrollment and I was going to show you the other table, which is uh, by events, to to compare the two, uh, to compare the two um, uh, and, uh, outputs, so that you can be able to understand the, the differences here. Okay, so to be able to do this, let me uh, duplicate, and then be able to quickly recreate that uh, table that we had stopped at, and um, so we have this. And then we have this one. So fresh one, and then it is an event report, a before table, and the program stage, we, the program we're using is that vaccination, and we are doing it by six. And then the period was uh, again this year. And then the organization unit was, uh, uh, level three, then update. Hello. Hello. Prosper, kind of remember to remove the 12 of the period, 12 of, oh, 12 of months. You guys, you have a sharp eye. Thank you very much. Yes. OK, so as a table, then it's, let's rearrange it so that we can be able to uh, be able to see the organization in the laws. Then the six can be there. The period can be up there then you update. So I want us to compare these two tables and you see the outputs and then you will be able to appreciate. Uh, so I want to do what I try to do and float my computer. So you will be able to see that here for this uh, capital region, uh, we have 371 in female and on this other side, we have 663 uh, for female in the capital region. So the reason is that um, when you use events, it will count all the events that are in there. So these particular, these particular people, because you remember they have first dose and second dose, some of them are being counted twice uh, because they have two events and that's why it counts all the events. While when it comes to enrollment, because I told you it only picks the last event, so probably what is being counted here is the one record. If somebody has one, one, one event, one attendancy, or one uh, vac vaccination um, event, it is going to count. So you can see almost it's like halfway, meaning that enrollments will always be picking one record across the entire enrollment. So it's looking at an entire enrollment as opposed to looking at the, the frequency or the events that you have had in, 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 that, uh, in, in your program. So that's a difference that you will be able to see. And uh, uh, we could be able to stop here and be able to uh, go to our last part of, the, of this session, 
which is uh, what our colleagues, uh, our colleague asked in the question. Like, for example, I want to um, analyze my data, which probably is going to give me aggregate numbers to look at uh, uh, the requests and the number of, of tests that have been done. So if you remember, if you have our program in, in at heart, you do recognize that this data is collected in different stages or at different points. So what happens is um, uh, we will need to be able to cut across. So the enrollment type of output allows us to be able to cut across uh, the different uh, program stages. So it will be able to allow us to be able to analyze data from the, uh, uh, the, the, the stage one and stage two and, th and, uh, and combine all those into one uh, output. So to do this, uh, our request was uh, for those who are in disease surveillance, and this is going to be very common, that the line lists don't, don't only come from one program state or from one section. The line list in disease surveillance, they will want you to be able to have a whole cascade of the events of that particular person. Meaning that uh, for every suspected person, they will want to see um, what was the diagnosis, which we'll be picking from the diagnosis stage. What was the, uh, the lab request that was, was done? And what was the lab result and what was the outcome? So they want to have that list that is complete. If we go to our school education people, you may want to have an, um, a, a line list of all your learners. You want to look at all their information, their bio information. You want to look at their attendance. And you also want to look at their performance in class. And this could be collected in different stages. Performance and, um, and the learner attendance could be collected from the different stages. So this enrollment type of line list is what will allow you to be able to pick those different elements, data elements from the different stages. The only unfortunate part here is that it only allows you to pick the last the, the, the last the last events or the last records of each stage. So if it was a vaccination, it will be allowing it only pick the last record, which probably could be the last the last uh, uh, vaccination dose, which is a dose two. If it's from the learners, it will pay, probably give you the last event and so on and so on. If it was from the toilets, it would probably give you the wash program. It would give you the last assessment of the of a particular uh, sanitation facility. Okay, how do we go about this? Again, you can be able to restart this app or go to either refresh the app to clear this or go to favorites and clear it. But let's refresh so that we have a fresh look of this. And the event report we will load. And, um, uh, and here we are going to produce a live list. We can not even refresh, uh, refresh it. Okay. Let's go and click on. Um, uh, new, and then we are able now to, to generate the, the, the line list which cuts across all the different stages. It also applies for pivot tables, and that will be your homework to be able to generate a report that uh, combines uh, data elements from the different stages. Probably it is uh, sex, test results, and the, and the PCR type. Uh, sorry, the test type and the, 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 and the results. But let's go for, for surveillance. So we're going to look at uh, a line list. You pick that. And then you will pick the output now enrollment because we are going to cut across to be picking data from different stages. You pick enrollment. And then you will pick the program. For this, this program, as you all still remember, it has only one stage. So it is not going to bring it out the way we want to be able to see it. So let's go for the surveillance, which has how many stages? Four stages. Okay, so you click that. Uh, so we click that, and then we should be able to select the different stages. Now here we can start with, uh, okay. so here we can start um, uh, generating the list of what we want. So for example, I, if you still recall, I have this in my head, uh, they wanted to know, to have a list and be able to show uh, if people had signs and symptoms or they had underlying, underlying conditions. 
So that can only be picked from the stage of clinical diagnosis. So you pick that. But before you do that, they want to be able to look at some bioinformation. So the first thing they want to be able to have in the list is the, is the case ID, which I can type ID, and it's just there, local case ID. Then uh, the names, which is the surname, name, which is the, oh, sorry, what did I type? Name. I'm using a different, somebody's laptop, so whatever I type, don't blame it on me, blame it on the laptop. So there is a first name, there is a surname, and then they also want to see the sex in the list, very key for surveillance or for your learners. They also want to see uh, the age or, age or date of birth, I think age. They want to see the age of that person. Uh, and that is as part of the bioinformation. You could also go ahead and say where did they come from? And that is going to be also very key. You want to see their telephone contacts and all that you can add. But let's stop here for this particular one. Then um, the next uh, part they want to see is information about the lab request. As, uh, oh, they, also, they, they want to see information about underlying conditions and whether they had signs and symptoms. So you remember the stage that is we're going to be selecting from is the clinical diagnosis because that's where the data has been captured. It was organized in a way that data on conditions or signs and symptoms is in there. So I can come here again since I've already selected it. And uh, I can also filter down and say, I want data elements. So you can be able to say, I want data elements and it will reduce your, your search to that. So I want to see underlying conditions. You want to say if they have underlying conditions and they also want to see uh, those the line list to show um, signs and symptoms present. Yeah, whether they're present. If they also wanted to say, do we all want, you want to see whether they had cough and fever, you can also add it. But for now, our line list is what, uh, uh, those are the two elements they want to see from here. Then um, what about to, when it comes to lab, lab, lab requests, uh, request, they want to be able to pick information about, about lab requests. And in the lab request, they want to see the test reason. Why, 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 why are we testing this person? And the, the test type. What kind of test did we order for? And remember, this is COVID. We have the PCR, we have the rapid, we have all the other types that you, the, uh, the, the requester of this line list wants to do that. Now, you will see that when I pick another stage, what I've selected is not disappearing, which has been common to most of you. And that was because you have an, an, an event kind of output. So as I keep selecting, I selected um, underlying conditions, but when I moved down to that request, I still have them selected here. Just because this, we are looking at enrollment. We are looking at the entire uh, program of this of, of these particular cases. Then, when it comes to lab results, they wanted to see the test results. What was the test result? So I come here again, and I can be able to see that I have still filtered by data elements. And it is going, we want to see the test results. Sometimes they want to be able to even look at what was the date of testing. Yeah, so, but let's add this one. And then uh, we will be able to see the results. And then finally, they want to see the outcome, which you will pick from outcome here. And these are the kinds of outcomes. So, uh, here's outcome is what we are going to pick. And this will give us the different options on what outcome came, uh, came out. And of course, you can also add death in case those who have died, then you have, you have. So I've been able to construct my nine list of all these, the elements that have been asked. And you will see that I have selected them from across different stages because of being able to select the what? The enrollment type of output. So you go ahead and choose the period which you and take that study of months, maybe the one for the last year. Yes, last year. And then you go to the organization unit and they may probably want it for uh, a particular region or for the entire country. So you just take care for the entire country and then update. <coughs> what was last year? No. What was the period we just selected? 
No, this year. This year, I think we have the time of this year. <coughs> oh. Okay. What? You didn't select this year. Uh, I didn't select this year. It's selected. It's selected. And the the period, yeah, and the period is selected. Okay. And then we update. You're using the demo. Did we run analytics on the demo? Why is it free? It's here. And the unit selected. Magic is happening here. I don't know what uh, we have everything selected very well. And we have no filter. So maybe the edge here. So maybe it's going to be an update. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there was a, the problem was on the edge. If I wanted to add the edge, I should not have been able to add the the the, uh, the legend uh, because that's what we already removed. And then we have our our we have our line list which cuts across. So you will be able to see that uh, this the date of registration when the onset was and where they were registered, their IDs, some of them will have no IDs. So these are attributes up to here. Then we have the symptoms and we have the lab re request, which is here. And then we have also the what? The test results. So we have the positive ones and then the in, in inclusive, in, 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 sorry. Uh, then we have also the recover, those who have recovered the health outcome. So this has been able to allow us to be able to pick elements from all those stages. For the school people, you will be able to have your results, marks, and all that. So basically, this is a, this is part of our last session on in this. And uh, whatever we have touched is all in the exercises. So if you want to be able to continue and be able to practice this, please follow the, the exercises and also be able to follow the guide that has been given to you in terms of your analysis. Okay, so I think this is the end of our session today in terms of analysis. And uh, we, we've been able to see how we can be able to aggregate data by using the pivot tables. And we've been able to see how we can do some line list. This is um, and, um, being able to generate a list of all your raw data for you to be able to import, export, or use it for uh, data cleaning, or use it for your presentation. Uh, and we will also be able to go through to look at the events, uh, the, the, the type of outputs. And again, now I think this rings into your mind is when I use an event type of output, what does that mean? That means that you are dealing with only one stage and it is taking care of all the events in your, uh, in your, yeah, and you, uh, it's taking care of all the elements within that particular stage. And then enrollment is when you are able to uh, cut across the different stages and select different data elements from the different stages, we've seen the problems, they, we have been able to work with this, you can also be able to work with case uh, uh, contact tracing, and we've seen that, you know, you have different stages on where you can be able to select your different data elements for analysis output, and then we have been able to see the filters. The one last filter that I've not been able to show you is you can filter by even a, a, a free text. For example, if you knew a local number, you can be able to filter and say, I want all those which have 23 as part of it. So when I do the filter here, it's only going to give me where the IDs are only containing a 23 somewhere. That would be also filtering. You can filter by name. So you see only the numbers that have come here is where the ID at least has in some 23. You can also filter by names. You can just say, I want to see where there is Emma, where there is John, 
you type in there, you can just be able to say, I want to contain a name that has uh, Emma there. Then you can also be able to update your filter. So you see that it only gives me only the Emma. So you can, the learners, the whatever, the toilets so by name, you can be able to do, be able to filter by, by text here. And then the period and, and, and um, the organization into now to select them. So that's what we've all been able to uh, see today. The saving, uh, where you go to save and uh, favorites and then downloads, those are, Things you can easily be able to do right now. I can download this as Excel, but just by clicking on that. The layout, we've been able to look at that. And the options are not so many. There is, uh, for, um, including only completed events where you have, you have picked in the complete. Those are the records which are also going to be able to only show. So if they have not picked in complete, the record will not show. So like, for example, all those who are entered without, com without a clicking on complete, that's why they have disappeared. So if I bring them back, uh, so it means somebody just came in and entered and did not click on the complete button. Now, one quick last one um, uh, is uh, I wanted to show you is about the date. So the date that we are using here is the date when it has it ha the, the event happened. So for example, if you are looking at, um, uh, let me do this quickly, quickly. Like you are looking at uh, your vaccination uh, a table of vaccination and it's an event and let's look at the registry. Uh, and here we are looking at the dose number. So if I do dose number here, and this is my table of this year, uh, for not forgetting to, to deselect uh, this last 12 months, then you update. So you will see that this is only giving me Maybe let's just do last 12 months. Uh, that would be easier to show the difference and what, I'm, what I'm going to explain here. So um, we have, you can be able to see that these are events and this is when they were captured. So it means that in December, 2020, they entered seven clients for those one, 628 for those two. That, that, that's the date when they were vaccinated. So the event date or the date of vaccination was selected is this. But it's also when you want to know when it was, in, entered into the system, like when it was captured. So if I go to options here, no, no, it's not options, it's layout. When I go to layout, I can be able to change by aggregation type uh, here on the time frame. So you see, this is based on the event date, but you may want to know when the data was entered. So the date when it was created, you just click on that created, date created, or last updated, and then we update. You will see that uh, because we imported all this data, None of them has been just that it was uh, uh, created that oh, it was no they were created this year. Actually, they were created this year, but they were the events were, were last year. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the difference. So sometimes most of you want to know when was the data exactly entered and when was the event uh, captured. So this is where you come here in the layout and you can choose the the time. So when last updated or event date, those are the differences. Okay, thank you very much. I think let's stop it here. Uh, we may not have time for questions. And I think since we had uh, we had uh, quite a number of questions in between, uh, we should be we should be good. But uh, remember, immediately after here, we have a session for those who want to continue with an interactive session to ask questions and uh, somebody is there to answer them. Uh, please, uh, you can do go to the, you will be able to be given five minutes and you can transition to the, uh, to the, that uh, Zoom link. It's